I found a new favorite romance author. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a quick guide to Lorraine Heath, which is an author that I recently discovered and it's an author that I really adore. She's one of my favorite historical romance authors right now. And as I'm talking about this right now, I actually pre-ordered or I ordered all her backlist copies of her historical romance novels. So unfortunately the historical romance novels that I will be talking about in this video, I do not own physical copies of yet. I actually listened to six of her books through Libby, which is the library app. So I borrowed it from the library and I really want to own physical copies of these books because they were just so good that I want to see them on my shelves and I want to feel them in my hands. A little bit materialistic, but that's what it is. So basically, Lorraine Heath is an author that I have seen before on my shelves. Like I own a couple of her books. I haven't read the books that I own on my shelf yet, but I've seen her on in bookstores. I've seen her in like, you know, Instagram posts and things like that, but I just never gave her a shot and I never gave her a try until recently. It blew my mind because if I knew that her books were so good, I would have prioritized it way before all the other historical romance authors that I was reading. Not to say that all the other historical romance authors that I was reading were not good. It was just saying I should have balanced it better and read more diversely among authors as opposed to just reading one single author all the time. But the irony of it is that I'm reading all of Lorraine Heath's novels at a time right now. So the books that I want to talk about in this video is actually from two series because her series are fairly short. They're always like kind of trilogies so they're very easy to finish as opposed to like Lisa Claypiss's series, the Ravenel series, which is a six book part series and then Julia Quinn's The Bridgerton series which is an eight book part series or um, Tessa Dare which I read her whole backlist collection so yay for me. So I've only read six Lorraine Heath novels so far so the series that I have read is The Helians of Havishman and The Lost Lords of Pembroke. So you can already tell that this guide to Lorraine Heath is already me just like fangirling and gushing about her books. A lot of my friends like I think Lacey has read some Lorraine Heath novels. Jessica has read some but she completely forgot but my historical romance friends like they don't really read much of her and I'm willing to be the person to just shove it in their faces so they can read as much as me just like what I did with Jessica where she started to actually read Sophie Jordan's novel so she posted on the day that I'm filming this she actually posted she posted a historical romance reading vlog and she read Sophie Jordan and so Joanna Shoup as recommendations from Lacey and from me and I I am so excited. So let's get started with Lorraine Heath's romance novel. So this novel follows two characters named Minerva and Ash. And now Minerva comes from a very wealthy family. She has a huge diary that everybody wants and everybody is trying to court her so that they can marry her for her wealth. And she doesn't want that. Obviously, she wants a relationship with love and with trust and with mutual attraction for each other. Unfortunately for her, she has gone through so many seasons where she cannot find one single person that she is attracted to, but she decides to take destiny into her own hands and to learn about the sexual pleasures of a relationship by going to basically a sex club where she goes through different partners, where she learns through different partners, and to learn more about the sexual act. But before she can participate in these sexual activities, she meets this mysterious masked man. He is the one that kind of introduces her into her sexual pleasures and her sexual life and her sexual activities. And what's interesting about Lorraine Heath's novels is that they tend to add a very modern twist to it. And by modern twist, I mean that this book, he, Ash, is an amazing photographer and he takes a lot of photos. He travels around the world in different continents like Africa to take pictures of animals and he shows them off when he's back at home. And she, he decides that he wants to take some risky pictures of her. And by risky pictures, I mean like not like nude pics, but like ankle pics, leg pics. So like definitely like some scandalous pictures of things that would never be allowed way back in the day. So um, she 
is definitely intrigued by him and she really enjoys him and his company. But um, what she doesn't know is that he actually knows her masked identity. Like he knows who she is behind the mask and he is not willing to let her go and he wants to seduce her in and outside of the club. And this book was so sexual and was so hot and steamy that I didn't realize that it would be like this when I first saw the cover. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who wants a modern twist to their stories, who wants a little bit of angst. And obviously for someone who wants a little bit of a steamier historical romance, I gave this one a four out of five stars because we were dealing with a hero once again who like never admitted his feelings for her. And it was just like dragging a bit because I knew, I knew you love her. Can't you just say it? And he was just being stubborn. Also, I just wanted to add that Ash from Falling Into Bed with a Duke it was a character that actually dealt with dyslexia and it was something that obviously wasn't known back then but as a reader you would know that he had dyslexia because he constantly talks about his math skills and how he knew he was smart but then sometimes numbers get jumbled up he doesn't understand how where the numbers go sometimes like you know words are jumbled and that's why he's not really good with managing his finances and I love that twist for the historical romance. So the next book in the series Series is the Earl Takes All. This one is a very interesting story that was very tricky to navigate. What I find that I what I really love about Lorraine Heath's novels is that she's very creative with her storylines. She's very creative with her characters. She's always putting her characters in like these situations that don't really make sense that it's very hard for them to get out of and it's what makes it good and interesting. So this one follows our two twin brothers and they are identical one of them is actually married off and um, before that they were married she and this other twin brother they kissed and they had like an attraction for each other but and they never acted upon it because they knew that it wasn't right because she was already betrothed to another brother. So they get married and they live a happy life until the two brothers go for a trip and one of them dies. And, and the person that does die just so happens to be the husband of our main female character, Julia. Now Edward is trying to fulfill his brother's dying wish, which is to pretend to be him in order for Julia to deliver her baby safely because she he knew that if Julia had so much trauma going in her life she might have a miscarriage so Edward is pretending to be the twin brother and pretending to be the husband of Julia while also trying to fight his own emotions towards Julia because Edward is in love with Julia and Edward is trying to not do anything that is going to hurt her emotionally and mentally beyond just lying to her about his identity and also lying to her that her husband is actually dead already and he himself is personally dealing with the grief of his brother and also trying to hide it away from Julia as well and there's this story is definitely for someone who really loves a black sheep in the family or black sheep characters because Edward is not as praised as highly as well as his older brother and he has to deal with everybody talking poorly about him because he's pretending to be the older brother and they're saying that Edward is the one that actually died so um I love this story it was really like it was really well done you know it could have went the other way where it got really awkward and it didn't make sense and you don't like it I think Lorraine executed it very well and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars so the last book in the series is the Viscount and the Vixen and now this book actually took on another twist that I've never seen coming but it's more towards the end so um, it's something that is troubling and it's again once again the characters are put in a very sticky situation. So this one follows a marriage of convenience trope where what happens is that our two main characters Portia and Lockie, I think his name is called Lockie, Portia is engaged to marry Lockie's father who is very old and that is basically having dementia and like he is grieving over the loss of his loved one which is his wife for so many Many years and Lockie is there and he's very confused as to why his father is marrying someone so young and why the young lady is trying to marry someone so old. So Lockie thinks that something is going on where the young girl is manipulating his father and he she is a fortune hunter and he is going to step in the way and basically not make this marriage happen. But unfortunately for Lockie there is a contract that they signed where he would have to pay her a lot of money for breaking their agreement to get 
get married. So Loki decides to step up to the plate and actually marry Portia. And that's where they kind of start their arranged marriage slash marriage of convenience. And towards the end, you'll kind of like see a big plot twist that you've never seen coming before. Um, Portia's in danger and she has a lot of secrets that she is hiding and now it's up to Lockie to either man up and to either forgive Portia for her lies or to just like let her suffer on her own. I really enjoyed this novel and I gave this one a very high four out of five stars and I really recommend you to read this series if you love characters that are always caught in sticky situations. So the next series that I want to talk about is The Lost Lords of Pembroke. So overall or arching story of this series line is basically these brothers were captured by their evil uncle and they were hidden away in a castle or they're hidden away in a dungeon for like a long period of time where they were basically emotionally and physically traumatized by everything that was happening because the evil uncle wanted to inherit their title and to inherit their wealth and their fortune so that's why they were kind of like the lost lords of Pembroke and now it's them coming back for a vengeance coming back to earn their right and their place in society but also thinking that they don't belong in society anymore because of all the emotional trauma and all the trauma that they've received. They don't want to belong in a society that thinks that they are anything different. So they are kind of like rakes and they kind of go against the society norms. So the first book in the series is She Tempts the Duke, then it's Lord of Temptation, and then finally is Lord of Wicked Intentions. And now overall this series I gave one a three out of five stars and the others were five out of five stars. So on average it was pretty high rating as well. So the first book in the series is She Tempts the Duke and this story talks about our oldest brother Sebastian. I believe he's the oldest and it's Sebastian and Mary's story. So this one I gave a three out of five stars. It was not my favorite because at times it dragged a lot. It was kind of boring. It was more of like a plain historical romance novel, not something that I would expect from Lorraine Heath after reading three of her books. So this one tells the story of Sebastian coming back home to take his rightful place and he just came back home from like a war or a battle where he's severely injured. So if you like scarred heroes then you'll definitely like this one because he's a damaged hero that doesn't appreciate his appearance anymore that doesn't think that he's attractive anymore and then we have Mary his childhood sweetheart that where she actually helped him escape from his evil uncle and they shared a really hot kiss but then he left to go to a battle and he never came back so Mary decided to move on with her life and actually get engaged to another person so now this is like kind of like a forbidden relationship where Sebastian is liking someone that is already betrothed and Mary always caring for his her childhood best friend that she might still have feelings for and this one overall was an average story I felt that the conflicts between Mary and the betrothed were very easily finished off like they were were easily solved and that didn't make sense to me. I thought like a more villainous character would come into play but it wasn't and Sebastian was just kind of there being all grumpy but also really liking Mary at the same time. So it was an average book and I gave this one a three out of five stars. So the next book in the series is Lord of Temptation and this story follows two characters named Tristan and Anne and now Anne actually has a betrothed. She is engaged to someone but she recently finds the news that he has passed away and unfortunately for her he's like passed away in like a different country so she needs someone to take her there so that she can finally have her last words to him and to actually you know deal with her grief over a loved one and also have closure in her life so she decides to ask for the help of Tristan who is a privateer so he's a pirate they have an agreement where Tristan will help her go across the country, go across the waters, go to that country where her betrothed is so that she could say her final words and things like that. But Tristan this entire time didn't know that Anne was actually engaged to a person that's now passed away. So during their trip where there's a lot of close proximity, Tristan is trying to fight his urges to touch a woman who's already betrothed. And in return, Tristan kind of hides his identity from her as well. So this entire time, Anne thinks that Tristan is nobody and that he is not part of society he's a person that always breaks the law and he's not a good person so Anne knows that there's no way that she could give her heart to someone who is that despicable and I really like this romance because I love pirates in my historical romances um I talked
talked about this before during my book hauls, but they're just so dreamy sometimes because you know that they're evil, but then they're not evil. And then it's just so great. And I really like this one. And I gave this one a five out of five stars for close proximity and for a hot male main character. So the last book in the series is The Lord of Wicked Intentions. And now the story falls to characters of Raffi and Evelyn. And now Evelyn comes from a background that is not suitable. And basically Raffi was out there and saved Evelyn from a life of ruin and a life of basically torture and sexual abuse. And Raffi decides to pay Evelyn and to have her become his mistress. He can pay for her for things, he can like buy her things, and he could put a roof over her head and basically for her to live a nice life, except for the fact that people know that she is a mistress. And her being a very noble woman who has a you know, a level of standard doesn't want to be Rafi's like mistress, but Rafi ends up seducing her to make her think otherwise and to make her think that, you know, life as a mistress isn't so bad. But what happens when Evelyn actually falls for Rafi and actually wants something more and she is saddened by the fact that Rafi doesn't want her for anything else other than for her body. And it was just very emotional a lot of the times because you could just feel the character's hearts breaking because they're so stubborn in their ways because Rafi doesn't think that he deserves love and Rafi doesn't think that he can have a normal family and that he can treat Evelyn well enough for her to be his wife but also Rafi doesn't want to let Evelyn go and Evelyn is not willing to subjugate her entire life to misery to a man that will never love her back and it was just so good I really liked it and this book also ended off with like this huge action scene that I never saw coming but it was like pretty thrilling and it was kind of pretty scary. So if you guys love historical romances with action scenes and things that will keep you of interest, definitely check out this book and definitely check out this series. So that is it for all the historical romances that I read from Lorraine Heath. I will definitely be reading more of her books. She has a new series that's coming out or she has a series that's already coming out but it's continuing on right now and I am so excited to read it because I love her books and she is definitely a romance author that not many people talk about because her ratings on her Goodreads aren't as high as Julia Quinn or Lisa Claypas or Tessa Dare. Her ratings are in like under 5,000 ratings and she is definitely someone that people need to pay attention to. Hopefully you guys have some recommendations to add to your TBR and let me know which Lorraine Heath books that you want me to read next or that you suggest me to read. I had some comments in my last historical romance like book haul where people are talking that I had to read Lorraine Heath's western novels. Personally I do not like western novels because they they're just not attractive to me. But if it's written by Lorraine Heath, an author that I really do enjoy, maybe I will give it a shot. But until next time, I'll see you guys again. Bye.